racist comment. It's almost yeah. And um, sometimes I don't know how to deal with it because it's so public. And yeah. I'll try to comment back or things like that. Sometimes I look, I get looks like I'm just saying it, so you don't understand. And sometimes mm-hmm. I have to feel like maybe I should just look at me and I don't really want to deal with that. Well, yeah, racism is a uh, a major human problem, you know. Still, and uh, Muslims are certainly not exempt from racism. There's different types of racism in the Muslim world than, say, in the, in in the West. I mean, Muslims have never had really a color racism. It's much more about tribe and clan and family and you know. And also now, like for instance. The Arabs, some of the Arabs might look down on, say, Pakistanis or South Asians, but there was a time when it was quite the opposite. <laughs> you know, I mean, they, the South Asians were up on the top. And then again, that's about power, and that's the nature of the world. And that's why the world is a kind of uninteresting place from that perspective, because so much of the world is about power. And that's why, like, Bernie Madoff is such a wonderful gift to humanity, you know, because Bernie Madoff, to me, once you understand Bernie Madoff, you can never take the world seriously. You know, because Bernie Madoff was on, he was the head of several charitable foundations. You know, he he was lecturing on ethics. You know, he was the head of Yeshiva Business School, and he stole their whole endowment. And he had plaques of honors. I mean, that's the world. The, you know, the world will honor the most dishonorable and contemptible people because the world is about appearances and not about reality. And it's very easy to fool people in the world because people are generally naive and they're generally simple. And that's why the venal people and the worst types of people in the world uh, get along very well in the world. You know, for however long they get along. I mean, Bernie did quite well for quite some time, and his wife even got off with, I think, two and a half million dollars or something. And but she didn't know anything about it, of course. I mean, that he'd stole sixty billion dollars. <laughs> I mean, my wife knows everything about everything I make and everything. <laughs> so, and he had one accountant. He had one CPA. I mean, that's a lot. And that CPA didn't know anything about it either. He he was shocked as everybody else. Bernie's sons were shocked, even though he set him up in business. Everybody's shocked. <laughs> All of Bernie's best friends, his one of his closest friends said, "I can't believe it. He was one of the nicest guys I ever knew." You know, I mean that's just dunya. So you know, at a certain point, I mean the the thing about it is, and this is it. I'm going to tell you the truth. You're a young man. Like I've been around long enough to know something, we're aliens. <laughs> really, this is not our planet. We're just here for a short time. It's it's like a, it's like a, a prison that you've been put in. And behave well, and you'll get off with good behavior. Really, just behave well, but ignore the other inmates. <laughs> really. Because it's, it's crazy. And there's a lot of nutcase people out there. And prison makes people mad in some ways. Do you know? So you just have to, do you know. Imam Malik said, and this is one of my favorite statements that I've ever heard. And this is worth the whole sitting through this whole lecture for this, really, it is. Imam Malik said, I, I knew a people, adraktu qawman, you know, I, I, I experienced a people who had no faults. And they preoccupied themselves with faults of others, and God gave them faults. And he said, and I knew another people who had faults, and they preoccupied themselves with purifying their faults and ignored the faults of others, and God removed their faults. So... I think the best thing for you is not to be that and to 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 just be the witness. You know, we're the, 
we're shuhada al nas. That that's what the Quran told us to be witnesses unto mankind. And if you're really a, a true witness, then you don't reflect that. If other people reflect that, there's nothing you can do about that other than be a true witness to somebody who who is not a racist or who's not a and and just watch yourself. Because we all have it. I mean, there's people, you know, there's been sociological studies of, of white people in this culture where they've had, had them interview different people with the same degrees and everything, and, but they have a black and a Hispanic and a white, and they would, their syntax would change. When they, when they were talking with the black people, their syntax would change because there's just sociological assumptions that are really hard to break in people. So racism is very subtle, and it manifests in a lot of different ways, and and everybody's carrying around baggage, and everybody's had their time at being on top. You know, the blacks have been on top in human history. You know, the Arabs were on top in human history. The whites were on the bottom for a long time, and the Irish still are. So, you know, their time will come. George Bernard Shaw said, I want to be in Ireland when the end of time comes because everything happens 50 years later in Ireland. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. It's time for Isha, I think, huh? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs>